This is guitar number two. I call the 25 string Raga guitar. It was built and co-designed by Scott Richter of Fairfax, California. Um, it was constructed about eight years ago. The basic concept behind this particular instrument uh, was to fuse my extended seven string guitar. As you can see the seven playing strings and the extension on the lower string and the extra frets up high with um, the Sarod. Um, I studied with Ustad Ali Parkhan Saab uh, in the mid-90s for quite a number of years and I thought it would be beautiful to design an instrument that had elements of Sarod, um, sitar, and extended seven string, <laughs> all mixed into one. So to me this instrument um, I kind of think of as being like cross-pollination. It's kind of the east and the west um, fused together to create a new identity, shall we say. Uh, my background being half Chinese and half Italian, in many ways I feel that this instrument represents my, my deepest core in some sense. Uh, so there's so many features to the instrument, uh, where to actually start. So there are seven playing strings. Um, there are actually five extra frets up high, so it can actually extend to a very high E. And with the two extra frets, it can extend to a very low A beneath the E string. If you notice, the frets are split. Um, is to accommodate the microtonal tuning of Indian classical music known as just intonation or five limit just intonation. So in nature, half steps are not equal. So um, that's why these frets are split to accommodate the pure tuning. In addition to that, there are 12 sympathetic strings, which are steel, and they ring sympathetically. So when you pluck a main note, you get resonance. So the strings increase the amount of resonance and overall color. Uh, some people think, well, I don't really hear them, but you, you know, they're there. They're definitely humming away, adding quite a bit more resonance. There are these two strings here that are called chikari, which are used And these four are called jawari. And sometimes you hear them together. So you have all six, the two, two jikari and the four jawari. Plus the 12 sympathetic makes 18, plus seven playing strings, 25 strings. Hi, I'm Scott Richter. I'm a guitar builder. I've been building guitars since 1995. I started as a furniture maker and wood carver, um, and I wanted to build a guitar for myself. And uh, as I was building it, at the time my shop had been working on a project for a local architect whose son was a professional classical guitar player. And he came in the shop to see what I was doing and um, commissioned me to build a guitar for him. After I built that guitar, he showed it to his, his instructor, who is a very well-known guitar player named Angel Romero. And Angel graciously invited me to come down to his ranch in, outside of San Diego to measure his collection of instruments which was a fantastic opportunity. He had uh, instruments from some of the finest builders of all time and a wide collection of instruments. I met, I met Matthew, um, I don't remember the date, honestly. It was probably, uh, I think it was around 2002 or 2003. I'm not really sure, I can't remember, it's been a while. And I met through him through one of his students named John Mendel, who had studied with, with Matt since he was a, a kid. And he was going to, uh, he was studying at the San Francisco Conservatory at the time. And I had gone to the conservatory to show my instruments to the students there. And he, uh, John Mendel, ended up commissioning me to do a seven string, an extended seven string guitar for him, which is something he had been wanting for a while. Um, and after I built it, he showed it to Matt and uh, introduced me to Matt. Um, and after that, I built a couple more extended seven string guitars for students and mats. Uh, and then he came to me with his idea for the Raga guitar. And uh, it, uh, it appealed to me right off the start because it was something out of the ordinary. 
And at the time, I was looking for something a little bit out of the ordinary. It also gave me the opportunity to really study music a little bit more um, and different scales and intonations and stuff like that. And it was a great learning opportunity for me. things that, that really attracted me to this project in the first place is because it was something that was different than um, your standard classical guitar. Um, I had been building guitars for I guess a little over 10 years at the point that I met Matt and he came to me with the project and I was starting to get a little tired of hearing the same pieces at, at every concert that I went to. Uh, there are um, obviously there, there's an endless a list of classical repertoire that people can play, but with guitar concerts, um, you do hear the same pieces over and over again because there are you know, specific pieces that are really pretty on the guitar that were that were uh, composed for the guitar that are, are have become kind of standards. But after you've been to a couple of hundred shows, you do get tired of hearing the same thing over and over again. Um, so to, to be able to build a guitar, I, I love the sound of the nylon string guitar. Um, and to be able to build a guitar that was done for music that was completely different, at least for me, the, the mixture of, of that, the classical sound with Indian classical music and jazz um, uh, was the main appeal of the project for me in the beginning. And um, it was really rewarding to hear it being played that way in the end. It was something that was completely different. It was, for me, it was much more lively and energetic, which was very appealing to me. It wasn't concerts that you necessarily just wanted to sit there and, and listen to the playing. You actually wanted to feel the music and move with it. Um, and uh, I don't really know what else to say about it other than um, certainly what Matt is doing with, with the music is, is unique. I and mean, I don't think anyone else is doing it with Indian music and jazz. Yeah, Matt is kind of amazing in that he has really mastered a lot of um, classical guitar technique and repertoire, but he also is very devoted to Indian classical music played on the guitar, which is quite uh, unique. I know he studied with Ali Akbar Khan. <laughs>
Raga guitar, however, obviously presented a lot of a lot of problems, and it went through a lot of different iterations before it ended up the way it looks now. Uh, the biggest problem, obviously, was how to withstand the tension of all the strings in the body. So the body had to be done quite differently. Um, I ended up laminating a, a lining that that held the periphery of the guitar that was laminated with carbon fiber reinforcement, laminated into solid wood. Um, uh, that was the main difference in the, the periphery of the body. And obviously the bracing was done completely differently. I also ended up, after building the first, the first version of the guitar, I put in two angled braces um, to help stiffen the body at the, the, the foot because I had Let's see, actually, the, the first thing I did that was a, a big mistake was to run all the sympathetic strings um, anchored at the bridge. And they were anchored with tapered pins the same way a steel string guitar strings were, were, were anchored onto it. And they were all anchored onto a flat plate behind the bridge. And that meant that the, the whole top was supporting all the tension of all the sympathetic strings as well as all the playing strings. And it was just way too much. Um, I actually... It, it stayed together, surprisingly enough, that I could give it to Matt and he could play it and see if we were going in the right direction. But it pulled the top up a lot. Um, and we did actually play it for a while like that. Um, and it did have a, a nice sound. The, the top picked up all of the vibrations of the, the sympathetic strings. But it was just way too much tension for the top to be able to support. So that was when I decided to run the sympathetic strings anchored into the, the heel of the guitar. Um, and I uh, fabricated a little brass. Um, it's not necessarily a bridge, it's more of a tailpiece that holds the strings at the, at the base of the guitar. Um, but that also meant that there was more downward pressure on the top of the guitar that I had to relieve on the inside. So that what I did in the first, when I first did that, um, I put in a, a truss brace across the guitar, I'll show you on this one, that was underneath the bridge that was anchored at both sides um, and pressed up against the bottom of the, the, the guitar top right where the bridge was in order to counteract the stress of the strings pushing down on the guitar top. Um, after the guitar was broken <laughs> and I had to put a new top on it, I went in a little bit different direction. I, I kept the linings and I kept the, the angle braces bracing back to where the, the strings were mounted at the bottom of the guitar and went with a lattice bracing on the top, which meant that the tension of the strings were distributed more evenly over the surface of the top instead of the traditional fan brace um, where most of the, the uh, tension of the strings is actually held just ahead of the bridge and there's very little um, support around the back and periphery of it.
my name is Steve Grasso. I'm Matt Grasso's father. And uh, we're going to probably speak about the journey Matt took. He started playing guitar approximately 30 years ago. And then, as he phrased at his birthday party just recently, uh, actually, he thanked me for the early years. The early years were the hard. It doesn't come automatically. We sang and did a lot of things, but he yanked the guitar, literally. It was kind of funny in its own way, but he yanked the guitar with, with authority, I could say. And uh, he never let it down after that. It, it was a, it, That's where the journey started. And he never set it down. Matt was dedicated from day one. I, when he picked, he he did he practiced twelve hours a day, just about every day. Came home from school, practiced every day, and he did his chores and did other stuff. I support him because I recognize the talent. He had it right from the beginning. He had dedication. He got the the talent was there, but he had the dedication like I never saw. He st even started with the Rubik's cube. That's where it all started, his dedication. He did. He could do that thing in 10 seconds after a while, dismantle and put it back together. And that leads to one other thing. Him, him inventing a guitar didn't shock me. I mean, it, it was like, wow. But that's the way his mind worked with everything. He wanted to know how it worked, what it could do, how it could be better. And he, and he took it out in the guitar, literally, objectively, and with music. And music, was, you know, for me, and I think it is for him too. And it was always for me as, as my as a younger person. It was my it was my spirituality, my philosophy, and I believe it's the same for Matt. It's the thing that gave me uh, stability or gave me hope. And when I was through my life, didn't have much hope. So he had it, but it, uh, it takes it takes many years. And he's in his forties now, and I think he's made his his circle. And a complete circle, and now it's all intact. The, the the physicality of it, the mental capabilities of it, the spirituality of it, uh, and the philosophy of it. And and for me, uh, music. I, I've said it earlier, but music is the is the for me was the spirituality and the philosophy to to keep that alive. Other than that, everyday life can really you know, put a squash on it. And in the early years, it almost put a squash to it. But it, I've always believed one thing, and, and to be supportive, you, kids lose things unless somebody somebody protects them from that negativity that comes at you. Everything you do in life, you're going to get a negative response. And it may be something you love, you shouldn't give it up. And uh, I gave him the room, I gave him the philosophy, early philosophy of it. Many people have asked me, did you teach Matt? Did you give him a... The only thing I did, I didn't teach him C, D, G, F, minor sharps, whatever. He got out on his own. I gave him the room and I gave him the perimeter and knocked down the walls that were trying to knock him down. That's basically what I did as a parent. He was on, he was rolling and he kept busy. And it, in fact, there wasn't enough hours in a day. I mean, he was, that, that was it. He didn't do anything else. In fact, Matt, Matt's never worked anywhere. You know, most people have to work and chase their dream and work and chase their dream. Well, he was so dedicated, he, he could just do his dream. So he realized that music was not just A, B, C, D. He branched, he changed. Every evolution, he changed, and he wound up changing the instrument. And that's a uh, pinnacle point, I would think, in anybody's life. Sit there and change an instrument uh, the way he did to play two types of music. And I'm sure that music gives him the spirituality and the philosophy that's running through his mind, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think he enjoys just doing it. And if recognition comes, so be it. But that, that's, not his, that's not his motivation. And that's why the, the music has, I'll say, heart, you know. Music is communication. And maybe it's the sweetest communication because he gets out what he's communicating and the people receive it may be what they perceive, or maybe the actuality of it all. But he, they, it is, I think, the ultimate form of communication. Words, words are nice, but words don't describe everything. And I think in music, you can go beyond words. And if you want to know mass motivation, I think that's what it is. To go above the mundane, to go above the words, and to go to maybe a safe place for all of us.